up a minute. I am your host, John Dowd, and as always, this is brought to you by LJ Brown Productions with full motion videos, courtesy of Derek Wright, because without those, I'd just be talking to myself. And I have Mr. Bill McGee with us once again. This time, he is just a guest, and I don't think we're going to touch on music. We're going to talk about some SCLC stuff. Bill, how's it going? Oh, it's going great, John. Everything, great. Everything's lovely. We just got to get together and get everybody motivated. That's all. Well, you have bitten off a mighty big chunk of uh, taking over as, I, I, guess, I, I guess, the prop terms president or leader of the Richmond chapter of the SCLC? Yes, president of Richmond chapter of the SCLC. What brought that on? Uh, you know, like the Blues Brothers, man, I, I had, a, I got a mission from God, you know, that <laughs> he said that we can't allow the band to fall apart and die, man. So Dr. King and, and all of those people, Wyatt T. Walker, Curtis Harris, all of the people who really worked really hard to build SCLC up, uh, they deserve for people to, to pick up the mantle and pick up the baton and keep running. And uh, we just can't let our legacy organizations die. And I, I just want everybody to understand that uh, people died on the Edmund Pettus, Pettus Bridge and people died marching to Selma. People mm -hmm. got beat and water holes and everything for our right to vote. Most of, right. Mostly what we were doing was uh, demonstrating for our rights and for justice and for America to treat us the way we're supposed to. And a lot of that came around to voting. So uh, my mission with uh, the Richmond chapter SCLC is to put voting rights and, and voting uh, back on the table so that, John, I told you, man, when I found that La Charisse aired Lost Petersburg by 533 votes, it disturbed me tremendously because Petersburg is a majority black city. And it's no way a Republican should have won the vote in Petersburg by 530 votes. That's just a disgrace. Now, so my issue is voting rights and people registering to vote. So that that's just on my heart, John. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, someone's going to say that we all have a right to vote, meaning we just show up with our ID and register. Uh, what would you say to that? Or would you push back on that? Well, no, we do have a right to vote, but but we have to register and we have to show up. You know, one of the stats that I like to, to quote is that 80.85 million people did not, eligible 80.85 million eligible voters did not vote in 2020. Even with Donald Trump on the ballot against Joe Biden, 80.85 million people decided not to vote. With as, with as serious as this election was, you still had 80 million people who were eligible to vote that didn't vote. How do we motive, How do we get people motivated to vote, the people who are eligible? Because someone's going to say, I did not like either candidate. My vote not is going to make a difference. Uh, the piles that be are going to do what they do anyway. How do we get people motivated to vote? Maybe not necessarily the the 18 to 25 year old, but the 30 and the 40 and the 50 year old. How do we get that group motivated to vote? And then I'll get back to the 18 to 25. Okay. That's well, it. well, it is my belief that the first thing we did need to do is educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. That those of us who are voting need to understand and educate ourselves as to why it's important to vote. One of the things that most people don't realize is that the Senate, which is only 100 people, control all seats that go on federal judicial benches. And most Senate elections are off-year elections, meaning they're not held during the same year that the president is elected. Mm -hmm. So by them not understanding the importance of the Senate and not really understanding how people get on the Supreme Court, 
Like I had somebody talking about it's Joe Biden's fault that the Supreme Court is like it is. And I really said, well, you don't have a clue. You really don't understand anything about how the Supreme Court is this, uh, uh, constructed. You know, and so they really don't understand. So we, first of all, like what we're doing right now, we have to educate people. We have to, right now, this year in 2022, there are 33 Senate seats up for election. Yes. 33 Senate seats. If, even if we have a 50-50 tie right now, if we could get 10 of those 33 seats and get a 60-40 majority in the Senate, we could change the world. True. We could change the world, but people don't understand how the Senate works and they don't understand what the Senate does. And so for that reason, they don't understand why it's important to vote in off year elections. So to answer your question, we need to start having some civic lessons in our organizations, in our fraternities, in our sororities, I'm challenging all fraternities and sororities to do a voter, a voter registration job with their own members. I'm challenging the Masons. I'm challenging, we need to have a civics lesson in our organizations so that people will know that off year elections are many times more important than presidential elections. But do you think some people should get it or maybe they just sleep over the fact when there's an election, whether it's at the state level, local, national, pick one, and they talk about gerrymandering and how the lines are drawn, do you think something should click or would click? This there will maybe someone will say, well, if these lines, what's going on with these lines? Why yeah. are they talking about the map and 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 all these squiggly lines here and there? So something must be going on if they are so hell-bent or so determined to have a line going northeast when last year it was going southwest. Now, you know, what's going on? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm now in, in District 7 where I was in District 5. Well, see, you're talking about voter suppression and voter suppression tactics, gerrymandering, mm -hmm is a way to suppress votes. And, yeah. and I understand that. But I, I'm talking more about voter disenfranchisement and voter apathy. Okay. You see what okay. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't really even know how many people could change the outcome because people don't vote. Right. See, that situation in Petersburg was kind of ridiculous 533 yes. votes yes and in a city like petersburg with 30 something thousand people you're telling me that we didn't have five six hundred people that would have voted if somebody said get up off your vote off your butt and vote because right. if we lose this particular seat you know in the virginia legislature then that makes, like you're saying, it, it gets back to the gerrymandering, the the ability for people to change voting lines and everything else. But I'm not, I am concerned about that. I'm more concerned about voter apathy, voter disenfranchisement, and people who really don't know why it's important to vote. Hmm. Uh, back to the the eight, the eighteen and the twenty one year olds. Um, you said it's, it's, we know, well, I'm not going to say we know, a lot, a lot more people should know how important these organizations are and that they should not be left to die. Some of them, quite frankly, need, need a jump start. That's what we're doing at SCLC in Richmond. But let, um, me, let, let me share this with you. So here's something maybe people don't understand. Once you turn 17 years old, if you're going to be a 18 by the November the 22nd or November the whatever the date is this year, I think it's the 23rd, 22nd, uh, whatever the date is by that November date, you can register to vote at 17. Okay, another mm. thing, another okay. thing. If you have a driver's license, you can register in Virginia to vote online. 
You don't even have to go in. You don't even have to do anything. You can go online and register to vote in Virginia if you have a driver's license. Okay. Number two, if you don't have a driver's license, you have to register by paper uh, registration, but that can be filled out absentee, sitting in a classroom, sitting in a club, sitting in a, a wherever you are. Uh, the fraternities and sororities can go around and, and take these things and let the kid put their social security number on it and everything and then seal it up, hmm. seal it up and then drop it off at the voter registration office. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there are a lot, that's one of the things we have to do is, is get the voter registration thing in front of young people earlier. Can't wait to November. Can't wait to right. October. Oh, most Maybe. definitely. Most can't, wait, can't wait to September. We, I started the voter registration drive in April and asked people to sign up young folks. I, I'm doing it in May. We're doing it in June. We're doing it in July. We're trying to get people registered to vote now. Now register to vote. And then show up in November, you know, when that is there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but the thing is to, to implant the knowledge as to why it's important to vote. Yeah, yeah. So they need to understand now. Now, I know we don't have all evening, but I'm a, I'm gonna hit on some salient points. Uh, this year, the election in Virginia is not a deep election. We do have uh, uh, Miss Spanberger running uh, running for office again. Our current legislator, our current right. U.S. Congress person. Right. All right, she's running. A representative Spanberger is running again. And she's she's been she's been gerrymandered. Right, she's in another district now. Yeah, she well, District yes. Seven has been redrawn. Is redrawn. What it is. redrawn. They've redrawn District Seven. She still stands a chance of winning if if we show up and and she she's a cons, not a conservative. She's a moderate Democrat. Right. So she stands a chance of winning. We we need to show up to help her. All right. Number two. Uh, Stacey Abrams and Reverend Warnock in Georgia need financial support because uh, I'm sending ten dollars or five ten dollars a month down to Georgia for Stacey Abrams also because uh, Stacey Abrams represents a historic opportunity. Yes, uh, yeah. the first black female governor in the country. Mm -hmm. The first black female governor in the country mm -hmm. and in a state like Georgia, Georgia, of all places, of all places, that would be as historic as Barack Obama becoming president yes. for a black female to become yes. governor of the state of Georgia, Georgia. All right. Then we have Reverend Dr. Warner. All right. He's run against her running against Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is totally unqualified to be a senator from the state of anywhere. 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 He is totally unqualified to be a senator. Uh, I don't even understand. It's, it's almost like a mockery of the Senate and of the governor process for the Republicans to nominate Herschel Walker to become a yes. senator. Yes. He's got so many skeletons in his closet, he could open a biology lab. I mean, it's, it's really, he, he, you, it's an insult to black people to nominate Herschel Walker. I mean, it, no matter what party he's running for, because he is totally unqualified for that job. Yes, but, and I'm pretty sure you've heard it, people only know Herschel Walker and present company included because of his career at Georgia, because of ESPN, because of Fox Sports, because of whatever sports channel you can think of, whatever radio talk show you can think of, we all know Herschel Walker because of his career at Georgia. And he was a heck of a football player. You can't take that away from him. So was OJ, so was OJ Simpson. Well, that's true. All right. That's now, true. now you but want I'm, I'm afraid that the, you the, want OJ Simpson to run for office? Come on, no. man. Come on, man. Right. But I'm 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 afraid that too many people in Georgia cannot get past his cult status as a football player. Well then 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 Georgia needs then you get what you deserve. If True, you want to if if you want to be embarrassed 
if if you figured that because somebody was a great football player who can hardly put together a decent sentence and you it's like electing mike tyson governor of something right yeah he was a hell of a boxer but he ain't qualified to be governor of nothing True. True. you know so i mean so if if if, if there are black folk and white folk in georgia that think because Herschel Walker was a pretty decent football player, then he, he was, would right, right. Then he would be a good legislator. Then and, no. and and but again, people don't understand who the senators are. They right. don't understand what senators do. If you ask them who are your senators, a lot of them can't tell you. If you ask them how many senators do you have in your state, a lot of them can't tell you. They can't tell you. And they and if you ask them what does the Senate do. A lot of them can't tell you. They'll blame the Senate on budget problems and things that we didn't get done and all that stuff. And we go like, that's that's not what they do. Mm -hmm. You got to go over to the House to talk about money, but you got to come over to the Senate to talk about other types of legislation and judicial things, judges. Now, right. you wanna, why you want to know why all these unqualified conservative judges are in place all around talk the country. About the Senate. Yeah. Now you talk about the yes. Senate. Yes. Yes. So if you want to know why certain laws are going to be upheld in the circuit courts and in the courts of appeals around the country, uh, but again, they people don't understand how the court system works. So they don't understand how the Supreme Court works. We need to have some civic lessons, John, and that's what we're doing right now. We're having some civic lessons. People, for, they, I ask people, did you skip 12 government? Were you asleep? <laughs> Everybody in Virginia is uh, mandated to take government in the 12th grade or 11th grade. In order grade, to graduate. In order yeah. to graduate. So I don't understand. I was a school principal for 20 years. And so I'm going to, I, I sat in so many government classes and got excited just listening to the stuff that you learn, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going like, yeah, boy, I need to come visit your class more often. <laughs> you know, Rodney Robinson, who was the national teacher of the year, man, was, yes. one, was one of my government teachers. Okay. And I, I used to go in and listen to Rodney. You know, I used to get excited. I said, these kids are learning the real deal. But that stuff was going in one ear and out the other, man. And if you ask that same kid uh, uh, six months after graduation, how many senators you got, Man, who you, who are your senators from your state? Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? You know what I'm saying? So we need to have some real, we need some of the people watching this, some of the people that you and I know need to take a civics uh, primer. You know, they need to go back and understand what the House does, what the, what Senate, the, does. What the Senate does, what the Supreme Court does. They need to understand the three uh, ex the three bodies of the Every United government. States government. You know, the legislature, the judicial, and the executive, executive branch. They need to understand what those branches do. All right, and then they need to understand if you're looking at the legislative branch, what does that? What are they responsible for? So let me get back to this other little issue. I'm gonna say, John, and I'm gonna let you ask some questions too sooner or later. Uh, <laughs> Cause see, I'm, I'm taking back over as co-host and as guest. <laughs> so, so look, it's good stuff. This is good stuff. So look, in Virginia in 2023, all 100 legislative seats are up for election. Mm -hmm. We are re-electing all of our 60 House House representatives, Virginia, the Virginia legislators, and we're electing 40 senators. Mm -hmm. Boy, we got to gear up now. We got to get people registered to vote now, now. get people registered, get them uh, informed as to what that means. Because if we can maintain, if we can regain the uh, the legislative balance in the House and keep the majority we have and increase it in the state Senate, we can keep certain people from doing dumb stuff. Yes. If, but in yeah. other words, we can keep the governor from doing crazy things because you got to be able to pass those bills in the House and in the uh, in the General Assembly mm -hmm. uh, and and in the Senate in order for the governor to sign them. And if you can't, I, 
the Virginia Senate has held this state together because we still have a slight Democrat majority in the Senate. Mm -hmm. All right. And slight. a lot and a lot of the stuff that tried to sneak through, they slapped it down. We would have everybody in the state of Virginia owning guns if it wasn't for the Senate. I mean, uh, 18 year olds could go out and buy an assault rifle in Virginia. Everything the the, the uh, gun rights thing is becoming so important. Virginia has always been known as an easy place to acquire guns. And DC and Maryland, everybody have always traced a lot of the guns that came into uh, their neck of the woods through Virginia. So we got some issues, John. We got mm -hmm. some issues that we need to work on. And uh, I have, I, 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 let me share the screen with you just for a quick okay. second. I'll see if I have still have it up. Um, I had the screen on my well. I just I don't have it up at this time. Let me let me see if I can get it up. I had the. Let me see right now. Are you seeing? What are you still seeing me? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I got it. Uh, well, I uh, I can't share it right now. So let me let me well, just stop. What I had is I had the site for uh, the Virginia uh, election board. The Elections okay. Commission. Okay. And I was trying to share that so that everybody could see where you go to sign up mm -hmm. to vote. For instance, right now, I get absentee ballots sent to me because under the last administration, Virginia during the pandemic made some changes mm -hmm. to, to our balloting process okay. where right now, uh, years ago, you had to have a reason why you wanted to send your ballot in by mail by mail now we have a no excuse absentee ballot system that you can sign up to have your ballots mailed to your home and at that point in time you can fill them out and send them back in by mail or you can drop them off at the registrar's office mm -hmm. what i tend to do is have my ballot mailed to me and then we okay. phys physically deliver them to the okay. registrar's office okay in Virginia, once you've delivered that, it is scanned and you can check online to see if your ballot has been processed. Okay. Not, not votes counted, but that you can check to make sure that they received your ballot. Okay. So we, my wife and I, we fill out our ballots here, seal them up, drive down to the uh, registrar's office, pull into the little uh, handicap lane or old folks lane and we hand <laughs> we hand them our ballot okay it takes five minutes i don't stand in line i don't have if, if people don't want to have to stand in line get your ballot mailed to you fill it out and take it there and drop it off okay it does even if you just walk in the office and they got a place for you to drop it in the box Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't even mm -hmm. have to worry about standing in any more line. Okay. So there are things like that that we need to educate people about. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need to all uh, become more educated and more understanding of what it takes to vote. Because along with not knowing why it's important to vote and why the Senate's important, why the House is important, why the President's important, a lot of people don't understand the process of how to vote. Mm -hmm. You know, if if they're not voting and they have vote now, if you haven't voted in years, you got to re-register because because you have been purged off the roll. I'm not exactly sure how many votes you can miss before you're purged, but the fact is, you can go online and check to see if you if your registration is intact, and if it is, you can say, please send me my ballot permanently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from now on. Email uh, mail me my ballot. And you get that ballot on the day that early voting starts. So the fact is, you can actually start voting a month earlier with your mail-in ballot. I did I did that for the November election. I think I voted on, I turned my ballot in on November the 18th, I mean, September the 18th for the November ballot. Okay. I mean, I was there before. Before the end of September, my ballot was in. Okay. All right. Now people need to know all these voter suppression need people to understand. 
the ballots are not going to be counted to election day. Right. They're not cheating nobody. They that they just registered that they received this ballot already in place and that you have voted so you can't vote twice. Right. You can't mail in a ballot, then go up there and show up and vote because your vote has already been registered and submitted, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're not going to count your vote until election day. All right. Now, some states had approved uh, counting the early ballots as of 1201 on election day. So at 1201 on election day, they can start processing those ballots that were mailed in some states. That's what made everybody kind of freak out because all of a sudden, a, one candidate had all of these votes that were processed, right? And if you remember, Florida was kind of trying to freak out, but they mm -hmm. didn't—they didn't tell everybody that we are—they are allowed to process early ballots, uh, mail the mail-in ballots early. 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 So automatically, you got all these doggone votes that have been turned in. Okay, and then you got to process the people who show up to vote, and that doesn't happen until late that night until the polls are closed. So a lot of people really, we, we're still, I'm getting back to this. We have to inform everybody as to what it is that we're doing. This is true. Uh, how much of that do you think falls on the Democratic Party from the national level on down to get people to get the message out. We I have to be I, registered and you have to vote. I don't see it as a party issue. I see okay. it as a, as a civic issue. Okay. I see yeah. it as SCLC, NAACP, the Crusade for Voters, the Urban League, the Fraternity Sorority, the Masons. I see all the civic, the churches. I see all the civic organizations and all the organizations, the SPCA, whoever benefits from people voting and turning out, I see it as our responsibility to educate voters. Okay. okay. All right. I don't want, and that's where I think the problem happened with Petersburg and everything else. People waiting around for the Democrats to go out and 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 tell people to come on and vote. Voting is a civic responsibility. It's not a Democratic or Republican responsibility. Okay. I didn't. I, I don't tell nobody how to vote. I, in reality, sometimes I weigh in on issues, but mm -hmm. I really don't, I don't even ask people, how did you vote? I just ask you, did you vote? Did you vote? And, and I mean, that's what my family, I don't ask my wife how she voted. I, my grandma voted for Nixon and she and I got into a whole uh, dust up about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> grandma, how you vote for Nixon? How you vote for Nixon, yeah. You know, but the point is, I really just, I'm not caring. I, I won't say I'm not caring. I'm, I, my impetus is to get people to vote. Okay. Whether you vote for independents, whether you vote for Democrats, whether you vote for Republicans. Vote. Exercise vote. your civic vote. duty and responsibility to vote. vote. This country has some of the lowest voting percentage turnout of any democracy in the world. But we taught ourselves as having one of the best systems. And, and we sit up and try to make it out like we're the greatest democracy ever, yeah. uh -huh. ever created, uh -huh. right? The <laughs> yeah. greatest yeah. democracy yeah. in history. Yeah. And then one third of the people who could vote don't, don't show vote. up to vote. Don't vote. Yeah, something's going on there. Do you remember a couple of years ago when someone in the legislature proposed that the, when you turn 16 and get your driver's license, that you automatically become a registered voter. That's right. I thought that was a wonderful idea, and it was shot down. I thought that yes, was, was a wonderful idea. Well, my my biggest thing and and uh, is if you still have to register for the draft at seventeen, then you should mm -hmm. have to register for the vote at seventeen, mm -hmm. because you're eligible to be drafted at eighteen, and the selective service is still requiring men. Right. Yes, requiring men, men. to show to up. Register. Yep. Yep. So that they're registered for the selective service at 18. There's something wrong with that if they're not requiring women. But if you can uh, be yeah. required to register for selective service, you should be required to register to vote. Well, for me, what when I turned 18, I registered for selective services and I registered to vote. It it was just and automatic to me. Automatic. But but I'm just one person. It was just automatic to me. And I remember 
the first time I voted in the local election, there was some neighborhood guys, uh, the social club, and they were helping, volunteering, and, and this guy, you know, right until I got him in the booth. Yeah, okay, this is what you do. It's this, this, and that was pretty easy, but you know, listen, it's this, 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 and you go in, close it, and and, and that was the end of that. But the you're, fact you're, that this was this was a guy, you know, as we say, one of the older guys, and he was volunteering, you know, at the polls, working the polls, encouraging people to come out and vote, and making sure that people fought, you know, that it proceeded. A, B, C, one, here it is, this is what you do. That's the end of that. You know, John, what you just made me realize was that uh, I probably need to put a couple of loudspeakers on the top of my SUV and get, a, <laughs> get an amp and, and, and seriously ride around uh -huh, uh -huh. and ride around with a microphone and said, have you registered to vote? Because we don't have that type of canvassing anymore right, where, right. where people, where organizations are just saying, you need to register to vote. Vote red, vote blue, vote independent, but just vote, vote, vote. That's what our mission is right now, John, is we need to get people to register to vote and tell them, my friend, I don't care who you vote for. Who you vote for, just as vote. As long as you vote. Right. B because in the end, I think the issues themselves will take care of who yeah. voted for what. Yes, yes. If you're standing up for, somebody said, uh, they had a thing about liberals want clean air and uh, clean streets and clean water and and people getting along with each other and everything else. And if that's what your your policies are, you know, or if you want guns and you want everybody to be able to own an assault rifle and you just walking around the street going like everybody should go out and buy a gun, you know, people will understand the difference and go like, is that man crazy or what? Mm -hmm. You know, it versus say everybody likes clean water, everybody likes clean air, everybody likes uh, smooth streets. We're here to make sure that we get jobs to the people, job, mm -hmm. you know, jobs, training. Your policies are going to determine whether anybody yes. votes. Yeah, yeah. I um, <laughs> I remember when the, when the statues were being taken down, and someone had asked, "All right." At that time, uh, Mayor Marsh, um, he said some guys came to him and he said when he became mayor, Rich, he said, are you going to take the statue down? Are you going to take the statue down? He said, man, we were trying to bring jobs to Richmond. He said, I laughed. He yeah. said, we weren't thinking about that statue. We were trying to bring jobs to Richmond. And that's the first thing these guys came to him saying, are, are you going, what are you going to do about the about statue? The statue. He said, I laughed. He's right. not trying to bring some jobs, trying to bring some economic development to this Absolutely. town. Absolutely. And that's what we still need to be yeah. doing right now. So now John, back to oh, before we wrap up, back okay. to the 18 to 20 year olds. You know more so than I do because you've been around long and you grew up and you were you grew, you spent time in Atlanta, you grew up in Atlanta, so you were in the heart of that. And you said you want to get young people involved, in which we all have, we know that, but that wasn't exactly a strong suit or you know, the top 10 things to do with those legacy organizations. That might have been number 17 on the list to get some young people involved, to have some young people in place, not necessarily to pass the torch, but to light another torch. Well, what SCLC, they always did, they what always S, what did SCL, not want. What SCLC, it was always about young people. Okay. That, that's okay. why SNC, that's why SNCC with John Lewis and Stokely yeah. Carmichael, all of them were all shoots from SCLC. SCLC, okay. Uh, Ella Baker had the first uh, SNCC meeting at Shaw University. Uh, in 63, 61, 62, 63. Um, and it was sponsored by the SCLC. So yes, young people have always been involved. I marched with Hosea Williams in Atlanta way back when I was 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, the college crowd has always been involved. That's why I always thought, even in Petersburg, in Richmond, Virginia Union, Virginia State. So John, it's, it's, I think we're going to run out of time. But it's very important that young people okay. get involved. Okay. All right. That'll do it. Not, I said it because it was always the impression that they didn't want young people to be trained to take to get in leadership positions and to be groomed for a leadership position or to have leadership positions. So maybe that's an image of something we can work on. But yes, we've we got can. to get people registered. We've got to get them educated. And we've got to get them engaged. 
Thank you for having me, John. I really appreciate it. Glad to do it. it. And if someone wants to join the SELC, what's the best way? Uh, the best way to do it is go to the national SCLCnational.org and just fill out the application online and put Richmond chapter. Okay. You got it, folks. For Bill McGee, this is John Dowell, and this will do it for this edition of Listen Up a Minute. Until next time, stay safe. Be blessed. I pledge to be the change I want to see in my community. Register and vote. I pledge to vote in all elections, local, state, and national. Vote. I pledge to always remember people suffered and died for the right to vote. Vote. I pledge to always remember we, the people, have the power. Vote. I pledge to always remember to make a change vote. I pledge to remain in school until I graduate. Register and vote. I pledge to remain a law-abiding citizen and protect my right to vote. I pledge to always demonstrate respect for myself and others. Vote. I pledge to get out the vote. I took the get out the vote pledge. What about you? Vote. Take the pledge. Take the power.